Yeah. Why do you think? What, in your opinion, was was like the driver behind trying to start the, start the company in the first place? Right. So Elon was pretty clear about that. You know, he he originally wanted to see humans, you know, move, settle on Mars. Like he wanted humans to literally, you know, he talks about it becoming a multi-planetary species. He's not like larking around. He's, he's pretty serious about that. Um, and he thought originally he thought the way to do it was through NASA. Um, he thought if you got more budget for NASA, they would be able to, you know, build a transportation system to go to Mars and, you know, they would take it from there. Um, but as he did more research into it, you know, and realized that, and this was, this was back in 2001 when he was, you know, wanted to do this little experiment where he would send a small biosphere to Mars, um, and have like plants growing. Um, in this biosphere on the surface of Mars, and he wanted to have a webcam that would stream this back to Earth. And he thought that would inspire people to fund, you know, the, to, to provide more funding for NASA. It was pretty naive. Um, and he realized as well that even if NASA got more funding, the way the U.S. space industry was going, um, the price of launch was not going down, it was going up. Um, and then NASA would not even, you know, would not be able to afford any kind of Mars exploration program, even if it got more, more of a budget. Um, and, he, and he got pretty frustrated as he looked at what Lockheed and Boeing were charging in terms of, of rocket launches. And, and he figured there's a better way to do this. Um, and the first step toward, you know, getting a settlement on Mars is really bringing down the cost of launch. Um, so I said, I'm going to see if I can do it better and faster. And, and that was the genesis of SpaceX. I've I've heard the story that he he did he finally did the maths on a flight back from Russia where he tried to buy an intercontinental ballistic missile. <laughs> it's it sounds yeah. like something out of a out of a TV show. Well, you know, he had he went over there several times and he says that they, they were never really serious about it, you know. Some of them were pretty disrespectful. And he said every time he would thought he was getting close to a price. And so this was just he wanted to buy an old ICBM from Russia to launch this, this, this tiny, you know, biosphere to Mars who had one team of people working on the biosphere and he was himself trying to procure the rocket launch. Um, and, and he said the price just kept going up every time he got close to negotiations. And so he realized that they weren't really serious about it, selling it to him and, and that there was probably a better way to do it anyway. Ultimately, I don't think that launching the biosphere was his motivation for founding SpaceX. I think it was his general frustration with the state of the space industry, both in the fact that he could not buy like a commercial launch in the United States for any, any kind of reasonable price. I mean, if he wanted at that time, it probably would have been $150 million. And so that's one reason why he went to Russia. And I think he felt frustrated by the fact that he had to go to Russia to find a commercial launch. Why, why was Russia, you know, um, a former communist state so much better at launching competitively than the United States was. Mm, why was that? Um, well, it's complicated, and I don't want to go too deep, maybe into space history. But, but you know, NASA had decided in the 1980s and 70s it was going to rely on the space shuttle, um, and the U.S. military wanted its own independent access to space. So it had given contracts to Lockheed and Boeing to develop rockets, um, and they essentially had a, a monopoly on those contracts, and they didn't really have any incentive to drive down prices, and so in contrast to what Russia and Europe were charging for their launch systems for, and, and, and we're talking about at this time, like the big market was like things like direct TV satellites going out to geostationary space. The U S companies just were not competitive because they were able to get so much money from the military for their satellite launches. Mm. Yeah, that makes sense. So Elon came along and decided that they were going to try and build reusable rockets. Like, why, why, why had no one tried this before? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, so NASA had built the space shuttle and they did reuse parts of it during launch, but it, it was just really expensive and it, it took a long time to, to turn around those vehicles. Um, entrepreneurs had come along with the idea of building low cost and in some cases reusable rockets. Um, and I, I cite some of those in the book, but there, I mean, there's a bunch of examples, a company like Amrock, Beale Aerospace, um, Microcosm, um, Xcore, you know, they, they had, they had, a lot of them had talked the same way of, of, of Elon did like, you know, 
we should be the FedEx of space, right? Um, in terms of fast, relatively low cost delivery. Um, and, and they had all failed. And so the, one of the surprising things about SpaceX is that they not only had this audacious vision that they were ultimately successful in, uh, in carrying that out. So why, why, why did they, why were they the ones who were successful? Like what, what set the company apart aside from, right, so that was, you know, millions to, to, of, of Elon's own fortune to, to like get it started, but why were they the successful ones? Yeah. I mean, you know, he put a hundred million dollars in the company and that seems like a lot of money, but, you know, Andy Beal, a Dallas banker, had put 200 million into his company and, and gave it up after three or four years. So it's it's not just money. And that was one of the really things I was interesting in, in, interested in looking out and finding out like why, why were they successful? Why did they make it sort of through all these hurdles that had tripped up a lot of other companies? And, you know, that's the question I would ask all of the, the early employees that I talked to, dozens of them. And, and the innocent, capable sort of primary answer is, is Elon Musk himself um, because he had money, which he put in. Yes, but he also had, had, and has this enormous drive. And so he would, he would find really smart people, um, engineers who were willing to work hard, you know, go out of his way to hire them. And then was, ex you know, extremely good at motivating them either through incentive or fear or belief in the vision that he was, he was laying out. And so he would ask them to do almost impossible things and they would, you know, work day and night as hard as they possibly could to achieve that. And then he'd turn around and, you know, give them the next impossible thing that they were supposed to accomplish. Is it, what do you think drives him personally to, 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 to just constantly say, well, you know, you've done this incredible thing. So um, that's good. So next. Yeah. It, you know, I've, I've, I don't know that I've ever met a person who's more driven than him in terms of his just, I think he wakes up every day thinking, how can we go faster? Um, or, or, or what's a better way to do this that no one's thought of and, and why, you know, why, why haven't we thought of that? Um, when did you meet him? If you don't mind me asking, I, I first met him in, in early 2018 and then a number of times since, um, but he, you know, he has this, he has this drive and, and I, I can't really explain it other than to say that like, it's, it's almost exhausting to be around him because he just like is constantly pushing the people around him forward. So it's, 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 you know, it's, as I say, it's, 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 you have to attribute a lot of it to him and sort of his desire to be successful. Mm. I mean, I've definitely heard that about, about many people who sort of become wild successes in in any field i mean completely like unrelated but i was i was watching um that netflix documentary on um on michael jordan mm -hmm. recently uh the the documentary series and and that's that's the the the, the way that a lot of people talk about him that he, he okay he was the best or the the best player on the court or in elon's elon's case quite often the smartest guy in the room um but like what he drove other people to do was what ultimately ended up making him as successful as he became because he couldn't be the star by himself. Yeah. And that's, and that's right. I mean, he, Elon had a lot of help at SpaceX because he, he hired very well. Um, and he, he had a grand enough vision that he attracted some of the youngest and smartest aerospace engineers at the time, then as now, um, to work at SpaceX. Um, and so that's certainly part of it. He his HR, person told me that he was directly involved with the first 3000 hires at SpaceX. You know, most of them were engineers, but he like, he did the final interviews with them because he knew who he was looking for um, and who he wasn't. And so he didn't want to hire duds and he wanted to hire, make sure the best people would come work for him. Mm. What's your first impression when you, when you, when you walk into SpaceX and then maybe even like when you get to get to do that, that interview with like the man himself. Um, like what's, what's the, what's your, what's your first impressions upon like walking into that building even? He's kind of a, well, you know, it's, it's, it's a cool place. Um, but he's kind of a, a tall gangly guy, like, you know, a little bit awkward. Um, but you know, very intimidating. Like he's, you know, he's not just Elon Musk. He's like, he doesn't have time for BS or like, you know, small talk. It's like, you know, he's, he's pretty serious 
um, when you, when you talk to him now, he does, he's funny. He, t- he tells jokes and things like that, but, but not, <laughs> not right off the bat. Right. <laughs> I mean, you, you don't start out with a knock, knock joke or something like that. It's he's, as I say, he's pretty serious. <laughs> he's pretty serious. I mean, you know, it's, you'd want to go have a beer with him, but during, you know, I having the beer the whole time, you might be a little nervous about saying something stupid and he'd be like, well, you're an idiot. And then like, <laughs> you know, you know, basically you know, tune oh. you out. Mm. I mean, I guess that's what I love about the the interviews he does with Joe Rogan. Cause like uh, Joe Rogan's not afraid of saying something stupid, which makes for some brilliant conversation. <laughs> yeah. And, I, and, it, and it helps too. Like if, if, Elon is comfortable around you, right? If he knows you and and sort of has a basic level of trust. And now he does not like journalists and I'm a journalist. Um, but you know, I've been doing this long enough that he understands where I'm coming from and, and you know appreciates the fact that that I, I know what SpaceX had to to push through to accomplish what it's accomplished. Mm. Um, and sort of have a bigger picture grasp of the US, you know, our global space industry. Thanks so much for listening. If you enjoyed the show, please subscribe, follow me on Twitter or sign up to our mailing list. Thanks a lot to our sponsor, ExpressVPN, the number one most trusted VPN. Get lightning fast connectivity with servers in 160 locations across 94 countries. Keep your browsing privacy safe with ExpressVPN and get a 35% discount on 12 months of ExpressVPN when you follow the link in the description below. Don't forget my book is now out and available to order on Amazon and on bookshop.org. That's Brexit, the Establishment Civil War. And most importantly, thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.